question whether it is self-identity or one that is imposed uh, upon us by uh, the outside world in terms of the caste uh, and class uh, dominance. Uh, and the identity being rooted in the lived experience. Um, and I must say that this is something that has come through uh, the presentation of all the speakers this uh, afternoon. And uh, I think the one point that uh, Mr. Sita Stephen made in the first part of her presentation uh, was how Dalit women were ignored on the one hand by the women's movement and on the other by the Dalit movement uh, leaders themselves. And uh, so the most discriminated within uh, these movements ended up with uh, them being the Dalit women. Uh, we've come to the end of our presentations for this afternoon. Uh, we have roughly about 25 minutes, uh, which can be used for uh, any questions, uh, any comments that anyone in the audience has. Uh, yeah, you could put up your hands one by one and uh, we'll take the questions. And if you have a group of questions, uh, then we can, uh, you know, the speakers here will address them. What you can do is when you stand up, one is to identify yourself uh, and also to identify whether it is meant for a specific speaker or you just want anyone on the panel to respond to that. Yeah. Also, just to add, we also have two speakers from our morning panel here. So if anybody who didn't get a chance to ask a question, then would like to ask a question, please. Yeah, I hope the speakers are okay with that. <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll start with Rubia. Hello, uh, Dhruv Jadhav. This is a question for panel in general. Uh, Sir pointed out at the start of the session that uh, when the Rohit Ramila investigation was happening, they came to the conclusion that he was not a Dalit. And that has been my problem with the people who are in position right now. Anytime you try to take back your identity, they dismiss your identity as a whole. They take away your struggles and your challenges as a whole. How do you even challenge your code which does not even acknowledge the problems you face every day? I mean, yes, we can have one conference and we can have articles, but we will always be on the periphery. How can we actually uproot the status quo in the present position, especially with the right-wing government uh, in power right now? Is there any solution to it? Uh, you know, we, we have this uh, aspiration for upward mobility in caste. The moment you get economically well off and you uh, reach a certain status, you try to distance your caste. And we didn't address how this in, uh, in, in unproportionately affects the woman. For example, in my house, I didn't find out I was a Dalit until uh, 10 standard in my marks card, right? So they try to couch it, they try to you know hide it from me because they know the kind of discrimination I will face if um, if people get to know or if I myself get to know. And what my mom used to do was, uh, you know, uh, she try to read the Bhagavad Gita over and over and try to teach me the Bhagavad Gita to you know aspire or to uh, reach up to that place. So uh, I want the panel to address how this in, uh, unproportionately, unproportionately affects the woman uh, more than the men because my dad never really like you know gave two thoughts what he just like okay he went to office he came back and whatever but my mom also went to the office and she also had to do these extra things right. So this is something that I want uh, someone to address. Yeah, any other questions about that? I heard that um, boy was saying and about that Devdasi Paddhati Andra. So, ye jo Devdasi log hote hain, inke paas jo log jate hain, wo achhe tapke ke hi hote hain. Koi aisa vakti unke paas relation ke liye nahi jata, jo ki unke tapke se ho. Ya phi backward people are not going from the Devdasi, and those people are keeping relation with Devdasi, those are well known persons only. Why is that? And with that, I would like to ask another question here. If you are a good, well known person, or if you are a good person, if you are a good person, if you are a good person, then you don't have to ask anyone, you don't have to know anyone, and you don't have to make a relationship with someone else with someone else. अगर वही बीवी को वो पति पसंद नहीं आता क्यों पत्नी उसको छोड़कर किसी और के साथ रिलेशन नहीं बना सकती दैट इज माई क्वेश्चन मैम थैंक यू थैंक यू हैदराबाद यूनिवर्सिटी लो एस सी का गुर्दी जा रहा लेना which 
I would have like a strange uh, uh, story uh, because when he uh, filed this complaint to the police station uh, during the social boycott and also when they are protesting, so every time he wrote that he is a he belongs to an NSA community and so on. So all those letters are there. And then strangely, when the group on uh, the, this committee was investigating, then there was one WhatsApp video which was just surfaced. Where was actually speaking that I, Rohit Vemula, Dalit, and, and so on. So, so uh, and within the community also, if uh, everyone uh, kind of knows that he, he is a Dalit, but he can be claimed. So, and in fact, the university website, after he died, so there was a, a notice put up. It also says that uh, uh, five uh, Dalit students and Rohit Vemula and so on. But later on, they slowly changed. They had realized that that is becoming an issue around which they have to fight a battle. So slowly they started saying, now they say who is Vimala, they don't say that he is a So, can you see me? Yes. 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 So, this is the first time that the Dalit community is the weaker community. So, the sexuality is the same as the sexuality. It is a question of power. So, the first time that the power is the Dalit women is the sexuality. And this is the same thing that the husband is the same as the husband. The sexuality is the same as the Group में है और इसकी वजह से वो बाहर नहीं जा सकती. This is a patriarchal and also a primarical construct. ऐसा नहीं कि extra marital relationship married women नहीं रखते हैं, रखते होंगे. लेकिन जो punishment मिलता है उनमें औरतों को उसकी वजह से बहुत severe होता है. लेकिन जो आदमी extra marital relationship रखता है, उसका ज़्यादा असर नहीं पड़ता उसके ऊपर. It will actually be a little bit of a shant. It's the women. And that is why it is the women who do karva It's the women who do all the pujas and the fasting. Men can come and go because they are breadwinners. So it's a very, very tense, you know, Brahminical kind of an understanding. And also I found it interesting that your mother is studying the Bhagavad Gita and trying to teach you the Bhagavad Gita. That is probably because she understands that you are going into a space which will be highly, uh, you know, Brahminized. And to fit in, you have to have that kind of mental furniture to be able to fit in. And I suspect that is also the reason why you all chose your uh, uh, surname as Arya, which is which means noble. So this is a way, uh, M.N. Srinivas, a very famous sociologist, calls this sanskritization, this process. So to fit in, because it is an artist, it's a tacit understanding or acknowledgement of the Sanskritic uh, roots of the way our society has been constructed so far. It has, of course, been challenged even from time of independence because of the Republican constitution we have. Possible. Since every space and every institution is rooted in caste practice, how do we do this, especially since there is a right-wing government here? I just want to say that it's important to recognize that the caste problem uh, is 2,000 years old. Uh, it didn't happen in 2014 when BJP came into power. And I think it would be useful to also read what uh, Gandhi and Congress did to the untouchables to know that the choice between BJP and Congress is really, I mean, uh, Kanchi Ram Saab uh, has described Congress as the green snake in the green grass. So, you know, uh, it's debatable about whether Congress is much better uh, option than BJP. But I think whatever the political parties come and go, I think the uh, anti-caste movements have been as old and as historic as the caste system itself. And I think our uh, duty is to take Baba Sahib's caravan a little forward in our lifetime, as much as we can. And I also want to say that right now the reason why we can't put a fast forward button on this social justice issue is that the dominant castes are not working. And uh, similarly for the feminist struggle, the cisgender men, heterosexual men are not working. I think the burden has to be taken by the very people who have created these systems and who benefit from these systems. Only when we take the burden of annihilation of caste can this thing be done fast? Probably not in our lifetime, but I think it, I, it's useful to set a goal to do as much as you can in this lifetime. And I think for both the feminist struggle as well as for anti-caste movements, 
I think people who benefit from these systems of oppression, I think we have to be ready to break these systems of oppression, not as a favor to anyone, but because we want to live in an egalitarian society. Right? Just because our forefathers created the system does not mean that the benefits should accrue to us. And this is not going to be on our forefathers. The blood will be completely on our hands if we allow this to continue in our lifetime. So I think we should all go through that. Content with the fact that uh, Rahul is a Dalit. So it really proves that Rahul is established as himself as Dalit, and they still will go on writing reports. And in fact, they have about uh, uh, the, the recent book page that about uh, 400 people employed uh, on the Facebook and Twitter and everywhere to comments and so on. Actually, uh, actually Rose generated actually 4,000 or no, lakhs of people to actually write and respond. Uh, about discrimination, about caste, about higher education. So all these debates that are happening now, these are all, I think, because of our own struggle. So that way that we have been really successful this year, I would say. We, first of all, there is the children and then the, uh, growing, how a children grows is put more on the mother than father. The society, the structure of the society has always been that father will be the provider and mother has to, earlier mother had to stay home but that, and uh, uh, like take care of the children and that has still, this, that is still going on. So if, uh, if upbringing of a child goes wrong and if, if a child commits some wrong, the whole, the whole thing, the whole blame goes, goes on the mother. It's not, never gone, gone on the father. The father is, itself is like, keep, you didn't take care of them. That's why, so I think that's why mothers are more careful about it. Yes. Yes. Not converting. And is there a hierarchy structure? If somebody is getting converted to Muslim, uh, Islamism, or Christianity, or Sikhism, so is there a hierarchy in, to, if amongst the among the day, and that in that way also? I mean, but on the basis of the religion, is there? A so I think uh, uh, religion is get away from the discriminatory treatment that you were receiving within the Hinduism, right? And uh, so if you look at Christianity or Islam uh, or Sikhism, you don't find justification of caste system in the scriptures. Yes, like what you find in Hindu. But ultimately, you know, it's a very interesting history that Babar Sahib has written about Christianity. It's a 40-page kind of article which you find in, I think, volume 8 or something. And very interesting, you know, how, uh, for example, when Christianity came to India first, and there was a priest called uh, uh, St. Xavier, who was in Goa. And he was the first missionary to come here, and he worked with the lepers. And then he died as a leper, and the, the Roman authorities were worried that that way they may not be able to convert a lot of people. So the second person they sent him was uh, Robert De Nobili. And Dean Obelie studied uh, India before he came from Rome to India and he studied the caste system. And he realized that if you want to influence, then you have to start from the top, which is the Brahmin. So when he came to the Indian store, he, he had the tilak and all that, and people asked him, he said, I am a Brahmin from Rome. And they carried him in the palanquin to the Brahmins. And that time there were boards outside churches and dispensaries, docks and untouchables not allowed. So the first conversion in India happened from the Brahmins. Yes, and that's why you have a category called the Syrian Brahmins Christians in, in Kerala. Hmm? And then it's only later that people said, this is not what, what Christ said. You know, Christ was always for the poor people and that's why, you know, from the fishermen and the tribals and the right. But by converting to Christianity or to Islam or to Sikhism, because you live in a society, unless you uh, transcend the caste system, the religion itself cannot give you a new meaning. To be able to, want, I think religion and caste are two different things. I mean, if I understand spirituality in, the, in terms of spirituality, yes. the two never match, right? Caste system fixed basically that no two human beings can be equal. But religion, in essence, says that everybody is equal. Right? But here, what we are trying to say, we are going to we want to retain the caste system and also have a new faith, a religion. That is the contradiction that we have. And therefore, within all religions in India, there is a hierarchy. Every religion. 
I think uh, I know whether you have seen that film that now Susan made. The first one was Lesser Humans on Mental Scavenging. But the second is a very powerful documentary which is called India Untouched. Which uh, talks about four religions and eight states. Uh, it's a lovely documentary which you know tells you what it's into every religion. Yeah, Mr. Martin, I think the question that he was asking is, we understand that there is hierarchy within the dominant section of society, despite the conversion to the religions. But within the Dalit community, is there a discrimination or what is the kind of treatment meted out to those who convert? Within the, within the yeah. Yeah. Dalit community? Well, there is uh, definitely, uh, there is what you call animosity, right? So, for example, there is a tension between Christians and Hindus. So Christian Dalits and Hindu Dalits. Yes, that's always there because ultimately this is how, I mean, it's difficult to understand, but how caste can sustain, right? And therefore, you know, uh, people uh, may find, uh, you know, I saw in the villages that the Dalits felt very happy that we were given tea, though it was given in the Ram Patra by the so-called the upper caste. So, Kitna Ijjat se mujhe chai diya. You know, because it's not the caste, you're looking for a security in the society. And the security is come with it from the power, right? And therefore, you know, when it, you know, that's why the animosity is continuous. Hmm? So yes, even within that, uh, within the community, there's a, you know, hierarchy and according to the conversion status, you find tension there, yeah. Okay, uh, who's got the microphone? Is there a question is to Mr. Martin. According to the teachings of our Guru whom we follow, or the whole Sikh community follows, the first thing he told is everyone is equal. So, so I am not able to understand whether the discrimination is done by the people who follow Sikhism, or is it only the Punjabi community or the people who, who are living in Punjab? Uh, they are non-Sikhs also. Hmm? Uh, definitely if they are non-Sikhs and they are Hindus, then definitely they do discrimination. But even the people who are Sikh, they discriminate. 